And we step now into that message portion of our scripture. And as we've been talking about the beginning of Jesus' ministry over the last few weeks, today, because it's Palm Sunday, we fast forward to the end of Jesus' ministry. And on the day of Palm Sunday, as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, we see this kind of contrast between the noisy crowd and the quiet, confident Christ. And so let's hear about that in our video for this morning. It was time for the Israelites to celebrate Passover. Many Israelites had traveled to Jerusalem to remember what God had done when he rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem too. When they arrived near Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead into a village. As soon as you enter the village, Jesus told them, you will find a young donkey tied there. No one has ever sat on it. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. The disciples did as Jesus asked. As they untied the donkey, its owner said to them, why are you untying the donkey? The Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought the donkey to Jesus, threw their robes onto the donkey, and helped Jesus get on it. People spread their robes along the road, and others spread palm branches cut from the fields. The whole crowd of the disciples praised God with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. The king who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Hosanna. The word Hosanna means save now. The people knew Jesus was their promised king, and they hoped he would save them from Rome. Some of the religious leaders said, Teacher, tell your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, If they did not praise me, the rocks would praise me. The next day, Jesus went to the temple complex in Jerusalem and drove out everyone buying and selling in the temple. He quoted the prophet Isaiah and said, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are making it into a den of thieves. While Jesus was in the temple complex, people who were blind and people who were lame came to him. The blind and the lame were not allowed to worship in the temple. Jesus healed them. Other religious leaders saw Jesus' miracle and heard the children saying, Hosanna to the son of David, or our king is here. They were angry and asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? They are saying you are a king. Yes, Jesus replied. The psalmist said, you have prepared praise from the mouths of children and nursing infants. Jesus left them and went to the town of Bethany to spend the night. During Jesus' triumphal entry, the people welcomed him as king. Jesus was the Messiah spoken about by the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. One day, Jesus will return to earth on a white horse as king over everything. So today, the, the video gives us kind of the broad context. A lot of stuff happens, right? There's that weird scene about the donkey. Jesus goes into the temple. He starts stealing the crutches from lame people and making them walk. Jesus does a lot of stuff. But today, I want to zoom in on that parade, the day that Jesus actually goes into Jerusalem and that scene. And we'll see that contrast between the noisy, confused crowd and the quiet, confident Christ. And I hope that when we see that contrast, it'll help us to join in a serious celebration of what Jesus is doing. So first, the noisy, confused crowd. Right? The noisy crowd is, is they're laying down their cloaks, they're laying down their palm branches, they're dancing around, they're waving palm branches, they're saying, save us, Hosanna, save now, or save please. They're calling Jesus the son of David, the king of Israel, saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And if you look at that scene and don't know any of the background, well, it kind of checks out, right? 
What we know about Jesus is we know he is the son of David. He is the king of Israel. He is the savior. And so their actions are actually all really appropriate. And yet, I wonder if they really know what they're saying all of this for. And in the Gospel of John, it tells us actually why the crowd gathered together. The crowd was gathered there because they knew that Jesus had raised the dead man, Lazarus, and they were hoping to see Lazarus. This crowd is gathered together to see the miracles of Jesus. You see, because they have a, a pretty clear idea in their minds of what they need to be saved from. Right? We've got these, these Roman neighbors who kind of take over and they're taxing us. It would be nice to be saved from them. You know, this inflation's kind of out of control. It'd be nice to be saved from that. It would be nice if Jesus came in and kind of rearranged the political landscape, voted these guys out of office, and Jesus took over. And then the, the little kingdom that I've built, the, the household that I've worked so hard my entire life to establish, well, it's okay right now. But if Jesus came in, man, things could be great. We need a king to save us from all that stuff. And yet, they didn't realize that Jesus, as he rides into Jerusalem, is not the kind of Christ who comes with victory and, and military superiority, but he's the kind of Christ who goes to a cross. And sometimes I wonder if our kind of American Christianity falls into the category of that noisy, confused crowd. As we establish our lives, and, and we live relatively comfortable lives, there's difficulties here and there, but it would be nice if Jesus could just kind of swipe away those difficulties, if he could swipe away the things that are always on the front of my mind stressing me out. And, and then that little kingdom, that household that I've worked so hard to establish could, could just be a little bit more comfortable. And not to mention that eternal life thing. I want to sign up for that. Tell me where to sign. And, and Jesus, I'll take the eternal life. As long as you're doing miracles, Jesus, I want to be the one following. Sometimes we fall into that noisy, confused crowd. Not realizing that the path of Jesus is a path to the cross, not a path of saving us from the things that we think we need. But Jesus, the quiet, confident Christ, rides on the donkey into Jerusalem to save us from the things that he knows we need to be saved from. You see, this, this quiet, confident Christ is actually a better savior than we could have ever imagined. And while the crowd is being noisy and doing their thing, it's amazing that Jesus, who has been the one to, to stamp his words on every event up to this point, Jesus' words tell us the meaning of his miracles, and now Jesus is silent. In Matthew, Mark, and John, he doesn't even say a word on his way into Jerusalem. And it's only in the Gospel of Luke you, you hear what Jesus says, that if these were silent, the stones would cry out. And the only reason he says that is because the Pharisees are asking Jesus, please address the crowd. And Jesus basically says no. No, because Jesus knows that this, this is serious business. It's business that ends at the cross. It ends as the light of the world is snuffed out. It ends as the Christ, the King of Israel, gives up his life and is separated from the Father. Why? Because that crowd, and because those Christians, and because this world is filled with sin. Jesus goes to the cross, and on the cross he actually pays the punishment for our sins. He wins for us salvation from our sins, and salvation really from the worst influence on our lives, which is ourselves. Jesus saves you from yourself. He saves me from myself. He saves sinners from themselves. This is a better salvation than anything 
that we could have asked for as the quiet, confident Christ goes to the cross to save us. And all of this, so that we don't fall into this kind of noisy, confused crowd, but seeing this quiet, confident Christ, we join together in a serious celebration because the cross, the cross is actually really good news. It's even better news than the news we were hoping for because the cross shows us that we are saved from our sins and all of those other things that we did hope for, well, Jesus will bring those in time. But right now, he gives us the greatest salvation, salvation from sin, unity with the Father, and he beckons for us, he calls for us to take up our cross and follow him to say, I want to follow Jesus. Not the Jesus that maybe I hoped for, but the Jesus that is so much better than any of my hopes. I want to follow that Jesus. And when we say that, it means the things I want, the things I feel like doing, the things I think don't matter so much anymore. In fact, they don't matter at all, but the things that Jesus wants for me, well, those matter. And that life, is a life of an awakened heart. It's a, it's a life of freedom and renewal and sacrifice. It's a life where everything begins to fall into place and we have purpose. It's a life of serious celebration because we see this Christ who is so much better than anything we imagine and all we can do is celebrate and invite the people around us to join in the celebration because the quiet, confident Christ goes to the cross to save you. Amen.